Hey, it's A Humble Collector here, and today's video we're going to take a look at another postcard from my collection. Uh, this one features an image of U.S. Army Transport Republic. So flipping it over the back here, we can see that uh, this was mailed to a Mrs. Harvey L. Uber in Grove City, PA, uh, and it reads, Dear Mother, just a line to let you know that I'm sailing tomorrow, September 1st, from Brooklyn at noon. We'll write late. Love, Warren. And it was mailed from Fort Slocum, New York on September 1st, 1938. So, before we get into a little bit of detail about Warren, because I was able to actually find some information on him, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the USS Republic, because it actually has a very long and complicated history. The USS Republic started life as the SS Servian, and was originally supposed to be doing North Atlantic service. Um, however, these plans fell through, and the ship apparently just sat for four years. Uh, in 1907, she was renamed the SS President Grant. It would make transatlantic voyages until 1914 uh, under the Hamburg American Packet Steamship Company. So 1914, World War I starts. Uh, the President Grant is going to end up being interned in Hoboken, New York, until the U.S. enters the war, at which point she will be seized to turn into a troop ship. Uh, she was commissioned as the USS President Grant in August of 1917 and carried over 40,000 men to France over the course of the First World War. Um, after the war, she was transferred to the Army. One of her first tasks was taking members of the Czech Legion back to Europe from Vladivostok. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar, the story of the Czech Legion is fascinating. There's a lot of really good stories on YouTube. But basically, these guys fought their way across Russia during the Civil War, uh, made it to Vladivostok, and were then um, taken back to Europe and eventually ended up back in uh, the newly founded Czechoslovakia, which is really cool. But then following this, uh, in 1924, she briefly went back to civilian service with the United States Lines and then went back to the Army in 1931. So after returning to the Army, she was mostly doing uh, transport work between the mainland U.S. and some of the Pacific colonies. And at the time this postcard was sent, um, she was actually exclusively making a run from New York to Honolulu. Moving forward to World War II, uh, when Pearl Harbor attack happened, she was actually in a convoy heading to Manila. They ended up getting rerouted to uh, Australia instead. Yeah, she would see service throughout the Pacific War. Uh, in early 1945, she would actually be converted over to a hospital ship, and after the war was over, she was converted back into a passenger ship. And in the immediate post-war era, she made multiple trips from Japan to San Francisco uh, until being decommissioned in 1949, and she would be sold for scrap in 1952. So even though, you know, the ship's main role was hauling passengers, it did that for a wide variety of organizations, you know, all over the Atlantic and the Pacific, which is pretty neat. So now talk a little bit about Warren himself. Uh, weirdly, as I was doing the research on Warren, uh, it turns out he's actually not a World War II veteran, so we're gonna, we're gonna kinda get into that. So, from what I could find, uh, he was born on September 22nd, 1917 in Grove City, and I did find a few ship's manifests that list him. Uh, he was apparently supposed to sail from Fort Slocum, New York, uh, to Fort Shafter, Hawaii, on board the St. Mihiel in July of 1938, um, attached to the 3rd Infantry, but this trip was cancelled. You can actually see on the form here he was crossed out. Um, so something must have happened. He ended up getting put back on a list to go to Hawaii in September. He's actually on this passenger list here uh, on board the Republic, leaving Fort McDowell, California on September 24th, 1938. Now, like I said, he's not actually a World War II veteran as far as I can tell. He died on April 20th, 1983, and according to Find a Grave, it has a note here that he was a U.S. Army peacetime veteran, which is interesting. And I did actually find a draft card for him from 1941, uh, noting that he was 5'9", 130 pounds, brown hair, brown eyes, light complexion, and was apparently living at home and currently unemployed. So it seems likely that he must have rounded out his service in the military prior to World War II kicking off, and then managed to not get drafted over the course of the war. At least that's what all the documents and the fine grave seem to indicate, uh, which makes him pretty darn lucky, all things considered. You know, he got to have a couple years of peacetime service, and then manage to miss the Second World War. Um, so yeah, definitely not the story I was expecting with this card, uh, but an interesting one nonetheless. Uh, yeah, overall, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment down below. Love hearing from you. Uh, thank you all for watching. Happy collecting, and I'll see you all again very soon.